I can reveal to you today that while the world looked for the youngest billionaire in Africa and they looked for him all over the place, he was right inside Dar es Salaam, very close to Ikulu, yeah, Dar es Salaam. Yeah, that's the president's official residence in Dar es Salaam, State House Dar es Salaam, if you like. This information is confirmed and verified. And to me, it was very shocking. Well, I revealed that and a lot of other mind-boggling pieces of information to do even with the motive behind the kidnap of Mo Deuji. Ay, 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 ay. Anyway, a very warm welcome to this video. And without wasting any time, let's get down to business. And let's start this story at the beginning. Multiple sources have confirmed that weeks before Mo Deuji was kidnapped, he had a very big problem with John Pombe Magfuli State House. And what was the problem? The government wanted Mo Deuji and his family to surrender some prime pieces of land right next to Stigler's Gorge. Now Stigler's Gorge is where the government of Tanzania is putting up a huge hydroelectric dam yeah, to generate electricity. Now this issue reached cabinet level yeah, and at one point it was decided to deal with Mo Deuji using legal means, what government referred to as legal means. Now, governments all over the world do this, but governments in Africa are very notorious for it, yeah? including governments in Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, all over the place. What normally happens is that they dig into a person's past and they look for any legal issue to nail somebody with. I've talked about that on this channel very many times. Yeah. So what happens, they compile this huge file and then they tell you, we want you to do this. And when you say no, they start waving the file at you. <laughs> now, unfortunately, this did not work with Modeji. Yeah, because apparently he's a very clean businessman. In fact, he's an above average clean person. Because the truth is, if the government wants to find something to nail you with, it's usually very easy. So the fact that they could not find anything that could stick on more Deji tells you a lot about the character of this great Tanzanian. Now, I sense that I've lost some of you, yeah, maybe newer people to this channel. So let me explain what waving the file is all about. Normally in this file, there would be pieces of evidence, pieces of documents, that the government can prosecute you with in a court of law. For instance, you underreported your taxes and they have the evidence. Yes, you didn't pay taxes and they have the evidence. A corrupt deal here and there and they have the paper evidence. Yeah, If they are in court and you are charged, you are going to be jailed. So really the files are things you have done, your sins, so to speak. Now, while the matter was still in cabinet level, you know, the cabinet of uh, the Republic of Tanzania, yeah, uh, one senior minister suggested that he would personally talk to Mo Deuji, yeah, so that he does what the government wants. He does precisely what John Pombe Magfuli wants him to do. And so this senior minister approached Mo Deuji, but Mo Deuji was stubborn. And then he released another piece of information that uh, the cabinet did not have. The billionaire said that he had actually used some of the land the government wanted to grab from him as collateral yeah, to secure a loan from a bank. Now when this information got back to President Magfuli, his outburst and what he said really tells you a lot about the man's understanding of wealth the generation of wealth, and how wealthy people generate more wealth. The president said, I, this rich man, and he's using our land yeah, to get loans from banks, I will deal with him. Now, 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 that is a very telling response. First of all, by using the expression, our land, that would imply that the president does not consider Mo Deuji a proper Tanzanian. Now, this is ridiculous 
Yeah, because although Modeji is of Asian origin, his family has been in Tanzania for many generations. Modeji himself was born in Singida, Tanzania. That's a very rural area in Tanzania. His father and his grandfather were also born in Tanzania. Anyway, let's move away from that. Now, the other thing that has come out very clearly from the president, and indeed that question was asked on this channel, yeah, one person asked in the comments area, why is it that the president of Tanzania seems to hate rich people? Well, today you have your answer. It is indeed true that John Pombe Magfuli hates rich people. Why? Because he believes all rich people have used corrupt means to get rich. He believes that it is not possible, not possible, for somebody to become fabulously wealthy without being corrupt, without doing dirty deals here and there. Now, if we can take Mohamed Deuji's example, as I've told you, his family has been in Tanzania for generations, okay? And the money which Mo Deuji has used to expand the family businesses is inherited, yeah? This family, in short, has made its money over many decades, many years. And Mo Deuji is not a tenderpreneur, if we can borrow that word from Kenyans. A tenderpreneur is a corrupt person who makes wealth from getting government, huge government contracts and sometimes not even delivering. Yeah, that's very common in Kenya. Mo Deuji is not a tenderpreneur. This is a man who generates real wealth. He has factories. He manufactures things. I mean, there's no other entrepreneur in Tanzania, no other business that employs more people than Mo Deuji's companies. Except, of course, the government itself. <laughs> and the government is not in competition because it's not a business, it's the government. Now, this fact about the president, which has been displayed and shown many times in actions, yeah, because actions speak louder than words, should send a chill to anybody who intends to invest in Tanzania. It seems that the president wants only poor investors to invest in Tanzania. <laughs> now, I have no idea how that will work out, but uh, <laughs> that is really the reality. Anyway, now on to Mo's kidnapping. It is very instructive, yeah, in case anybody doubted, or in case anybody was thinking, oh, the government was not involved, etc., etc., yeah, for those people. It is very instructive that in the middle of this tug of war, Katikati ya mvrutano. Ndo mo deuji alitekwa nyara. Translation, in the middle of all this tug of war is when the youngest billionaire in Africa was kidnapped in a very secure area of Dar es Salaam, very close to the residence of the vice president, very close to other high security installations and compounds. Now about five days before mo deuji was found, at about midnight, he was moved from a secret location to the Magongoni area. Now, Magongoni is very close to Ikulu Yarais, yeah, State House Dar es Salaam, John Pombe Magfuli's official residence. Now, the source of this mind-boggling information is extremely reliable, and I'll tell you what it, who it is. Yeah. It is a journalist called Ansbat Ngurumo. Now, Bwanangurumo is a very famous Tanzanian journalist. Yeah. For decades, he has had a column titled Maswali Magumu, Difficult Questions. Very respected journalist. Yeah. He was editing two newspapers, one called Tanzania Daima and the other one Mwana Halisi. Now, after the shooting, yeah, just bear with me, I give you a bit of background on this man yeah, so that you know why his information is always 100% spot on, okay? Now, shortly after Tundulisu was shot at, yeah, his car was sprayed with the bullets, okay? And he was rushed to hospital in Nairobi. Bwanangurumo wrote a column 
very detailed instances yeah on in the public record where the president had actually threatened Tundulisu and one of those threats from the president came barely 2 hours yeah before his car was sprayed with the bullets in Dodoma shortly after that very revealing article was published the government moved swiftly and shut down yeah the Mwana Halisi newspaper and they were not secretive about it they said their problem was the article Ansbad Ngurumo had written and then when Ngurumo suddenly found himself running for dear life and he fled to Nairobi Kenya and an NGO organized to airlift him yeah to the Nordic countries yeah he's probably somewhere in the Nordic countries right now but moments moments after the man had left information came through that intelligence officers of Usalama or Taifa were in Nairobi looking for him yeah to kill him now i know that might sound a bit far fetched yeah to the naive yeah but allow me a small aside here yeah a few months ago i had a video on this uh, channel where i told you that a certain tanzanian blogger yeah with a youtube channel called Tobias Marando who is based in the US yeah his life was in danger from tanzanian security uh, operatives in fact my headline was will marandu survive now that was a few months ago now a few weeks ago wait for this one i received some mind boggling information this information not only confirmed my earlier video yeah but gave details on a plan that was going to be executed to finish off bona marandu and this is how they were going to do it they were going to confront bona marandu in a public place yeah and pretend that they were arguing over something and then in the confusion kill him yeah and of course the reports would come out later that oh you know they were quarreling over something nobody would think that it was actually an assassination a planned assassination bottom line things are so serious in tanzania that not even the government critics who are out of the country are safe that is really what it is and i hope by revealing this information i have made a patriotic tanzanian anspat gurumo safer wherever he is i hope by revealing this information my good friend Tobias Marando is also safer if anything happens to those individuals god forbid do not believe it was an accident do not believe that people had a misunderstanding and were quarreling somewhere and then somebody died <laughs> don't believe that for a minute now this information i'm about to give you you can verify for yourself yeah but here it is a few days before bwana modeuji reappeared magically yeah anspat ngurumo wrote on his blog yeah information of the motive behind his kidnapping in the first place and he revealed a lot of the information that I've already revealed to you about the tug of war that was there between Modeji and the government and then he also said that Modeji had been moved from a secret location to the Magogoni area and then he added that the inspector general of police yeah was going to have a presser a press conference on friday morning and then he added shortly after that more deuji was going to be released so what happened next <laughs> on friday like clockwork the inspector general of police had a press conference we have covered that that on this channel and then after that press conference on saturday more deuji was released by the kidnappers <laughs> Ay, 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 ay. now you don't have to believe me just google sauti kubwa which translated in kiswahili means big voice sauti kubwa yeah and when you go over to that blog you will see ansbad gurumo's article which predicted to a dot yeah exactly what was going to unfold next now if this information has shocked you <laughs> I don't know what word to use to describe what it has done to me. I am Billawards. 
and you'll have to give me some time to recover. Yeah, let me just sign off and take some time off to absorb and digest this amazing, bizarre, mind-boggling information. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.